One quite popular option with Excel charts and graphs is to add a trend line. Now a trend line will allow you to see the trend. So rather than just looking at each of the data maps, it will produce a trend based on the values it has and those that it might predict. So if you have a set of bars going upwards, you could guess that the trend is for things to go upwards. If they're a little bit higgly piggly up and down, some are small, some are large, then it becomes a little more difficult, but Excel will always achieve it. Now, most charts will take a trend line. And if we use our three charts working file, we can see how to do it. Now, the first chart in here is a bar chart. However, it's a stacked bar. So when we go to add chart element, which is where the trend lines are, we see it's unavailable. So we'd need to change the chart type from a stacked bar just to a normal clustered bar. When we say OK, that's fine, it changes, and now we have the option for a trend line. The trend lines are accessible from add chart element or from the little plus over here because effectively it's the same thing. So we can put a little tick in trend line and that will ask, OK, which series do we want to base our trend line on? Let's base it on the north. OK, that then gives us a trend line for the north's data. Now you'll find that there is a little pop out option to choose a different type of trend line. Now a linear trend line mathematically looks at the values and says, well, okay, this is the path we're working on. Exponential looks at the values, but then works out the exponential of those values and potentially sometimes gives you a slightly different trend line. We have a linear forecast, two period moving average. Well, this looks at two periods and we can adjust that period you'll see shortly and works out the average and then maps a trend line based on those averages. And then there are more options. So again, if we went up here, trend line of the same options and then more options. Now we currently have a trend line on the chart. So if we select it, we can see where it runs because it's quite thin. And then we can access the properties for that trend line. So we've got one trend line on, which is for the north. If we want a second trend line, then we go to add chart element, come down to trend line and choose exponential. However, because I had the north selected, it tries to change that one. So I can go back to linear. Let's not select a trend line. Add chart element, trend line, exponential. So we've got a different type of trend line. And we'll choose the south. And you can see how that increases much, much faster in its trend because it's working exponentially. So we end up with this little line shooting off to the distance. Add chart element, trend line to add another. Let's go for a linear forecast based on the east. So the east line goes shooting off up here. And then let's add a last one, moving average for the west. Now each of these get added to your legend. So I can see linear north, exponential south, linear east, two period moving average. And you can select any one of your trend lines as long as you can click on it without clicking a grid line. There we are. And we can then go access the properties for that by going to format, format the selection and it brings up trend line options. Now in here we can change the workings of our trend line, currently exponential, but we could change it to linear, logarithmic, polynomial, power, moving average. More importantly, is we can change the label. Currently it says XPON South. I'm going to change that just to say South Trend. And you can see then, once I click out of that box into any other, it changes the label so it's easier to spot what's going on. Also in this same dialog box, I can control shadow, glow, edges, and the fill color. So at the moment it's an automatic line, but it's not very wide. So let's widen that up so I can see that better. And it becomes a dotty, fatter line. So with this box open, I can simply just click on another and we could widen that one's line as well and change its name. Trend line options, instead of linear east, we'll just say, East trend. And that one there, the west. Change again its label. West trend. And formatting the line to make that much thicker. And then our last little line here is the north one. Let's make it wider while we're here. And then the trend line options to make the label more sensical. North trend. So our labels for our trend lines are much more human based and each of our trend lines are more visible because we've widened them. And because they're all using different types of projection, they're all heading off in different directions. 
So the south one being exponential goes flying off into the distance. The yellow one is using a moving average. So effectively, it ignores the first value and then starts to work out an average because it's using two periods to work the average out. Car sold using linear. So that's just nice and level and going upwards. Now, when we're using bar charts and we haven't got time in our chart, the trend lines aren't immediately obvious what they're trying to predict. However, if we work with a line chart and sales, trend lines on here are very, very appropriate. So we select the chart and let's choose a trend line for the sales. There's our sales trend line. So although our sales look like they're going up at the moment, across the whole period, they have been steadily going up, but the trend is that they will steady to go up, not this massive up there because we had a dip here and there could be another dip in future. So it's going to look at the trend overall. With the line in existence, we can do exactly the same as we did before, just to make it a bit more visible by increasing the size of it and changing the label to forecast. So that's effectively what your trend line is doing. Now, if I change this also to using a moving average, you can see it sticks a lot closer to the line because it's working out an average of two periods. So that's two sales values. Let's increase that period to 12. Now we don't get any graphing for 12 values because it hasn't got anything to compare with. As soon as we hit 12, these points here are working out an average of the last 12. It sticks quite close to the actual values, apart from this big dip, that's really out of context. The linear one would show you the path generally going upwards. Exponential shows you that we are generally going upwards, but not so dramatically, you might not think. Logarithmic, pretty close. Polynomial has this curve to it, both before and after. Power looks pretty similar. The moving average we've just played with. And that's effectively your trend lines. You have different trend lines. Just try them out, see which looks best. But they're effectively interrogating the data you've mapped and then drawing a trend of that data. So with the sales information, that's going to be quite useful for projection. So if I change that back to linear, which shows the general path of our sales is upwards, not quite as dramatically as this steep line would suggest, because that's had to climb back from right down here to even think about getting to where we were when we were here. But the trend is generally in a forwards and upwards direction. Let's add another trend line for the profit. And we see that our profit is pretty much generally upwards as well. Again, they don't make these trend lines fat enough by default. So I always push them up to be a bit bigger, much more visible. And we can see there the trend line for the profit is generally on an upwards direction as well. So that gives you the ability to add trend lines to existing graphs, to help project and forecast and give you an idea of the overall picture.